Hi, and welcome back to Break 100 Golf. I'm John. You're going to love today's video because I'm going to go over my opinions about the Garmin R10 and the SkyTrack Plus after owning both of them. Now, if you're not subscribed to the channel or following the channel, please hit that follow or subscribe button. It'll really allow my channel to grow and allow me to continue to bring videos to you. Now let's get right into this. So the reason I wanted to do this video is because there's a lot of points that I was thinking about as far as which one would I buy and which one is better for me or better for somebody else maybe. And th there's a lot of choices there and I think it's all individual. So there's budget constraints for people. Uh, there are uh, space constraints, things like that. So let's start right off with the first one on my list, which is battery life. Now, the Garmin R10, this thing has a awesome battery. You can get about 10 hours of usage out of this, which if you're golfing for 10 hours, you're an animal. The SkyTrack Plus is about three hours. Um, that's what I'm getting out of it. That's more than enough for me and also Quite frankly, you can plug it in if you want to, to an adapter, and you'll be fine to extend the life of it. As far as who wins that, the Garmin R10 does win that because it has about three times or even more of battery life. The battery is absolutely incredible. All right, the next one is dependability. Now, right off the bat, the Garmin R10, I have had a lot of issues with connectivity, with it disconnecting. And it really wasn't the fault of the Garmin. What it ended up being for me is my Bluetooth connector in my PC was just not strong enough to keep a strong connection with what I use it for, which is GS Pro and Awesome Golf on the Garmin in my three car garage, it just wasn't strong enough. So I bought this Bluetooth connector off Amazon for like $15 that has an antenna and it solved all those issues. And the other issue I had was using a third party connector using the open API in GS Pro and it kept disconnecting there. And it wasn't the fault of that either. I had to change a window setting for it to run um, in administrator mode and it solved that problem as well. The SkyTrack, I've had zero issues with disconnects and all that. So because I've had those, those issues, uh, I'm going to give a slight edge to SkyTrack, but remember, it's not really the Garmin's fault. Overall, my Garmin doesn't uh, disconnect hardly at all anymore and my SkyTrack does not disconnect at all. Uh, but slight edge to SkyTrack. Fun factor, that's the next category. So, I mean, putting is the only added benefit with the SkyTrack, and I don't think putting is fun at all in Golf Sim. In fact, it adds a lot of time to your round. So if you set it on auto putt, which you can with the SkyTrack, if you set it on auto putt, um, it's going to put it out for you and it'll save time, especially if you're playing with more than one other person. I typically only play with one other person because it's just so hard to move bodies around in the garage. Um, but reality is if you're playing in a foursome on your golf sim, I would shut putting off. It just, it would add so much time, honestly, probably close to an hour um, with putting, but uh Overall, the fun factor, because of all the versatility in the softwares for both of them, uh, I have fun with both of them, and I enjoy both of them equally as far as the fun factor. There's so many different options for both. I'm going to give it a tie between the SkyTrack and the Garmin R10. Price. This is an obvious one. Garmin R10, $599. SkyTrack. $2,995. So if you're looking for a way to start in golf simulation, the Garmin R10 is a great way to go. Or, you know, something like the, the Rapsodo MLM2 Pro. Those are, in, that's another option that's uh, in the budget range or six or $700. Um, I've seen the Garmin as low as $549 new when they have it on sale. 
I think I even actually saw it at $4.99 one time, but that's pretty rare. Uh, the Skytrack Plus uh, typically is $29.95. You can always find a discount code from a channel or something like that or from Golf Tech that'll reduce the price. Uh, I think I paid $2,850 for mine. And then I also got the protective case for it, which I think is a no-brainer. You must have that because it's right next to your hitting area. Um, and then just a few weeks after I bought mine for $2,850, they put it on sale for $24.95. So that was a little irritating for me. However, I still think it's a good value for the quality that you're getting, but price, Garmin wins, hands down. Next is portability. Garmin, much smaller. It comes with a really nice case, uh, protective case. Um, you can use it outside very easily, much more difficult to use the Skytrack outside. Uh, as far as portability, Garmin wins hands down. And uh, for me, I don't use it outside. I, I took it out to the range one time and it's just one more thing I had to do. And there's other people on the range. So if it has to sit behind you, that's a problem. There's people walking through, they're not paying attention to it and they shouldn't have to either, quite frankly. But portability, as far as I'm concerned, um, the Garmin is the winner. Space constraints. Garmin sits behind, you want it about six and a half to eight feet behind you. I set mine at a little over seven feet behind my hitting area. So you're basically adding seven feet behind your area. So I set my ball striking area at about 10 feet behind my screen. The Skytrack Plus sits right next to that. You've got some backswing that you have to account for a couple feet. But by a landslide, the Skytrack Plus absolutely blows that away. So if you have space constraints, um, a side-sitting launch monitor like the Skytrack Plus or like a Bushnell or any of those Foresight GC Quad, those are going to be much better for you. Now it's going to cost you more money to buy those launch monitors and they're going to be better quality, but it also is going to limit the amount of space you need having the uh, side sitting launch monitor. So winner by a landslide sky track plus setup and alignment. Sky track plus you set it next to your sitting area. That laser comes out. You're going to hit it right where it tells you to hit it. As long as it's level, you know, you can just eyeball it quite frankly, as long as you have a level field of play, like in a garage, sometimes you got to have a little bit of a slope. So you may need to adjust that a little bit. And you can adjust that in the uh, app with Skytrack. But generally, you're just going to sit it right next to you. You've got your laser that points where the ball is going to hit. And then you're good to go. This, the Garmin R10, um, you really need to, because it sits way behind you, you need to get that perfectly level and get that set up. It's not much of a difference as far as setup and alignment. They're both really easy to set up, whether it be on your PC or in an app or whatever. It's really not that difficult um, if you're pretty savvy with electronics. And then if you're not, there's videos like I have on my channel and other channels that are out there for golf simulation that can help you as well as their websites and tutorials that each one of the products use. They're very, very good. So it's kind of a tie, I guess, for setup. But as far as a alignment, I'm gonna give the edge to Skytrack. Now, versatility. Versatility, I guess, with the software and all that, and I'm gonna talk about that in another category, the Skytrack is slightly more versatile because it does have the ability to putt. Now, you can putt with the Garmin R10, but you have to buy an additional device and it's a convoluted way to set it up, whether you use XPUT or use a webcam. And it's just one more thing. I just want to turn it on and play. With the Skytrack, you turn it on, you open up your app on your computer and it just connects. Uh, you can do direct connect with a wire. I don't really see much of a benefit to do that. Um, but if you have a strong network connection, that's the way to go in my opinion. The Garmin, you know, the, the same way, uh, you know, you just basically turn it on, open up your connector app for whatever software you're using, and you're good to go. But as far as versatility, a little bit of an edge to Skytrack, 
because of the putting. All right, so to me, this is the most important thing. And that's software options, which is the next category. So if we look at SkyTrack Plus, you have the new SkyTrack course play, which is in the SkyTrack uh, version five update. And it's really nice right now. There's 31 courses and it's high end software. I mean, it looks great. It's on par with, you know, maybe a little bit better than E6, uh, maybe just not quite as um, graphically detailed as some of the courses that are in GS Pro, but it is very close. I have no complaints with it whatsoever. And it's also fully supported. E6 Connect, you can use the Golf Club 2019, Creative Golf, WGT, and Pro T Play. Those are the supported for SkyTrack Plus. As far as the Garmin R10, you have Home T Hero, E6 Connect, Awesome Golf, the Golf Club 2019, Creative Golf, and for both of these, an up and comer, and that is E6 Apex. This looks like it's going to be an absolutely stunning golf simulation software for course play. It's not out yet. Right now, all you have is like practice ranges and stuff like that. It is going to be available for both the SkyTrack, SkyTrack Plus, and the Garmin R10. So you would think that maybe the Garmin R10 was coming to end of life. Well, it's not. Look at this. E6 Apex was announced for the Garmin R10. So both of these launch monitors are gonna be able to use E6 Apex. It looks incredible. Right now, all they have is just like the practice ranges and all that for Apex. But this fall in 2024, you're gonna be able to play E6 Apex for both of these. I don't know how much the subscription or how much the software is gonna cost, but it's coming. So I give that a tie. Both of these have plenty of options for software, high-end software for both of them. Next is cost of ownership. Now, Garmin does not require any additional subscription for their high-end uh, radar metrics, and they don't require a subscription for adding any of the third-party software. It does come with uh, the driving ranges if you use the app, but really, it's not really it doesn't relate very well or is conducive to using for golf simulation for a full golf sim. If you're going to hit it into a net and use it on your phone or an iPad uh, or like stream it to like a TV screen or a monitor, that's fine. Uh, but it doesn't really relate very well to like a 100 inch plus screen for the Home T Hero. But all the rest of it really does. As far as SkyTrack, for anything other than E6 Connect and WGT, they require you to pay a $129 or $129.95 or $130 a year subscription in order to use third-party software. In other words, to use like Golf Club 2019 or Creative Golf or Pro T Play. So not much, $130 a year. So as far as cost of ownership, the Garmin wins slightly because you don't have to pay for that third-party subscription. Our next category is shot delay. What I noticed right off the bat is that the SkyTrack Plus is just slightly longer for a shot delay. In other words, when you strike your ball, when it launches on screen is a slight delay. Now it is very important if you're using the network connection that you have a strong, fast network connection because I have two networks. And at first I was using the SkyTrack with a different network and it was a very long delay and honestly, if it was that long, I would have sent it back, but it wasn't the problem with the SkyTrack. It was the other network that I was using was just not strong enough. So I hooked it up to my other network and it works perfectly. I actually have the Garmin R10 set for a longer delay because I like it. I want to strike the ball, settle and watch the launch. So uh, it's about the same for me because I set my Garmin in my software to have a longer delay when I use it with GS Pro. Now I've said this in the past, I don't plan on using SkyTrack Plus with GS Pro. In other words, I'm not gonna hack it to use some third party connector to use the open API with GS Pro. I'm just gonna stick with the Garmin R10. But uh, you know, really comparing them both, the shot delay is just a slight difference as far as speed 
with the Garmin R10, so I'm gonna give the edge to the Garmin R10. Quality is the next category. I think they're both quality products. Garmin has a long history of making quality products from their navigation to their you know, golf watches to their launch monitor. Their quality is excellent across the board and dependable. I love the quality of the Garmin. I've had it for almost a year and a half. And the SkyTrack Plus so far has demonstrated itself to be a high quality product. So I'm giving that a tie in that category. All right, next category is disconnects. Now I talked a little bit earlier about disconnects that I've had a lot of problems with disconnects with the Garmin R10. It really wasn't its fault. It was the fault of Windows not cooperating or it was the, you know, the problem with my Bluetooth connector. Now, since I've solved that, I don't have any issues with the SkyTrack Plus disconnecting at all. The Garmin R10 occasionally disconnects, so I'm giving a slight edge to the SkyTrack Plus, but the Garmin has proved to be, once I got those issues worked out, to be very dependable and doesn't disconnect very often. Next is golfer versatility. Now what I mean by that is because of the Garmin R10 sitting behind you, if you have room to play, with the lefty, in other words, if your projector isn't mounted on the right side of your hitting area, like mine, right above the hitting area, then you can use the Garmin R10 or something like the MLM2 Pro, uh, you know, a launch monitor that sits behind the hitting area. You can use it for righties and lefties, where you really just can't do that for the SkyTrack Plus. Now, only about 10% of golfers are lefties. And I personally don't have any friends or people that use my golf simulator that are lefties, so it's not an issue for me. And the reality is to move and set up the SkyTrack each time for each golfer, that's just not really what I wanna do. So really, if you have friends or people that use your golf simulator, you're gonna wanna use a launch monitor that sits behind you, you know, like the flight scope like an MLM2 Pro from Rapsodo or the Garmin R10. So I'm gonna give the golfer versatility uh, category to the Garmin R10. Next category is accuracy. So I've owned the Garmin R10 for a year and a half. Uh, I've owned the SkyTrack Plus for less than a couple of months, but I've used it a lot. I've learned how to dial in the Garmin R10 with my previous setup. And it is very accurate with all of my irons as far as compared to my real world play. So I know when I'm sitting on a tee box that I have 170 yards to the pin, I know I can hit my seven iron with accuracy and with comparability to my Garmin R10, what it has told me in the past. The same thing goes with the SkyTrack Plus. It's giving me very comparable data Last year, I took a lot of lessons from PGA Pros using TrackMan and the Foresight uh, GC Quad. And all of these are very, very close, especially with my irons. Now, I do think that the SkyTrack Plus is more accurate with driver. And I think it does a little bit better uh, with side spin, which is why I really think you should probably use the RCT balls with the Garmin R10. Uh, some people have found some, you know, more accuracy with using stickers on the uh, balls that you use with the Garmin R10. You do not use stickers or it's not necessary to use stickers uh, or special balls with the SkyTrack Plus. On your clubs or on the balls, it works very, very well. But I do give a little bit of an edge to the SkyTrack Plus for accuracy as far as club path and then also side spin and distance for only on my driver. So I'm gonna give a slight edge to the SkyTrack Plus for accuracy, but overall, really the Garmin is a pretty accurate device I have found. All right, next category is no reads. And what I mean by that is a ball that is not detected by your launch monitor after it's struck. 
So all launch monitors have some degree of no reads and some more than others. And what I've really experienced here is with the SkyTrack, I have very few no reads. With the Garmin, I have very few no reads with like my irons and driver and hybrid and all that stuff. But what I experience a lot of no reads with is with short chipping. So if it's like, you know, 15 yards, you know, 10 feet off the green and you're chipping onto the green for like a bump and run, something like that, the Garmin does a great job. But I find myself having to use like a 60 degree and not using a lower lofted club around the fringes of the green in order to use it inside of say a 20 footer where it's a short chip and there's a lot of times where the Garmin just does not pick that up and I find myself having to modify my swing in other words take it back a little bit further or move the ball back like maybe five feet away from where the Garmin is to do my chipping I think that the SkyTrack with the camera and the dual Doppler both it just does a better job picking up short chips. The Garmin doesn't have a camera, and I think that's probably why uh, the Doppler's not picking up, picking up that slow moving ball, or it's not picking it up because it's not coming up off of your mat far enough. So the SkyTrack Plus has a huge edge for that. There are a lot of times where I have no reads with chips for the Garmin overall. The device works very, very well for everything else, but short chipping, it fails a lot. So huge edge to the SkyTrack Plus. Here's the last one, and that is my choice. So I've had the Garmin R10 for a year and a half. It's a lot of fun. It's been very dependable. Like I said, the last one with the no reads for the chipping, I'm not sure how you overcome that but since you can't putt it is a problem but overall let's face it golf simulation is just that it's golf simulation it's not like real world however my choice if it was a budget i'd pick the garmin r10 but picking between the two if i have a three thousand dollar budget my choice is the skytrack plus i enjoy both of them but right now i'm using the skytrack plus more and it's just a little bit more dependable with the no reads. And that's really the only reason. I don't really care that much about the putting. All right, so that's gonna be about it for today's video. I certainly do appreciate you watching. If you like today's content, please hit that like button. It'll allow my video to be shown to more people. If you're not subscribed to the channel or don't follow my channel, please hit that follow or subscribe button right now. I would really appreciate it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.